Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to connect a mesh testing node like maybe this one to the Wi-Fi network in your home or wherever you are. Some people call it wireless LAN, Wi-Fi, whatever. I'm going to um, first of all connect using the USB port, which is how I set up the installed the software and configured it. And then I'll show you how to connect it to wireless LAN or Wi-Fi. It's not straightforward. <clears throat> I was surprised when it didn't work and it took me three attempts to make it work. So maybe you've had the same difficulty. Let me just shrink myself down. Oh, apologies for all the junk in the background. That's my anechoic chamber wall coating and uh, that's HF loop antenna experiments. As you can see, they've been cast aside because of mesh-tastic I and mean, everything now is 868 megahertz. Anyway, apologies for the uh, time warp in the background. Let's have a look at the command prompt that works. Let's look at the <clears throat> browser. Let me just change that. So this is Windows. And as you know, probably you plug the um, <coughs> mesh-tastic node into the wife, uh, USB port type client.meshtastic.org, which is already saved here, of course. And then you make a new connection. I want to do it by a serial port. I want the one that's plugged in. And here we are. <coughs> seems to work. And to configure Wi-Fi is quite straightforward. You click on network and you have to enable Wi-Fi. You have to type in the SSID of your um, wireless LAN access point, which you should know, of course. And you also need to type in the password, which you also need to know. Of course, you have to pay attention to get it correct <clears throat> using upper and lower case or whatever you've chosen as a password or numbers. So you put all that information in. Then remember to send it to the node by pressing the save button in the corner. This will cause the node to reboot and you have to wait for it to finish rebooting before this is going to work. So I've already set that up. <clears throat> I checked this on another machine on a different laptop just to make sure that this um, information still works for my particular Wi-Fi access point that I'm using. Um, so what I'm going to do is close the tab. Quite often I find I have to close these tabs and reopen and reconnect after the machine's rebooted. So close the tab. I'm going to unplug. Oh, it just rebooted. <laughs> Interesting. So closing a tab reboots the device. You can see it on the display. If you can see the display, it says when it, which shows you when it's rebooting. Some of them actually say rebooting. Um, this particular Heltec doesn't. So set the region. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so what do we do? Um, we open a new tab and unplug the USB port. There's a little magic sound. I don't like it when I hear that sound when I'm using an external drive. It usually means something's broken or got disconnected. So um, now we're going to go in via Wi-Fi. So we use the same client, little app that runs in a web browser, Chrome-based browser, new connection, but this time a Wi-Fi one. So using HTTP protocol, that's the default that's already set. And because client.meshtastic.org always successfully <coughs> um, roots itself to my meshtastic node internally in my network, which I think is very nice. I assume that this is going to work as well. TLS is encryption. Why not leave it switched on? Seeing as it's going over Wi-Fi that can be received by anyone. So then you hit the connect button and you wait for it to connect. And you wait and you wait. And at the top it says loading, which is very nice. And we'll continue loading probably forever because it's not going to connect. Um, there's a problem here. So what do we do? Try again. So let's control T for a new tab, C alpha client. And <clears throat> I think I know something about networking. So I think, OK, maybe that redirect doesn't actually work. I need to type in the IP address of my node. And there are various ways to find out the IP address. It's not shown on the node when it connects to Wi-Fi. And I assume it has connected. So you can use Nmap if you like using Nmap or a port scanner in your network to find out the IP address, or you can connect your router, or whatever other DHCP server you have in the network. For most people, it'll be their um, internet router from their ISP. Look in the list of connected devices and find out the IP address of your particular device. And I think I did that, and I think it's this, 192. Oh, it's already stored. Yeah, so that's it. <clears throat> that's the IP address on my internal network. Press connect. So now there's no redirection that has to work. This has to work. Except it doesn't look like it is working. It's going to be loading forever. So 
one or two people have said to me they couldn't make the uh, Wi-Fi connection work. I thought I'd try it. I can't make it work either. But of course, as usual, we have a solution. So let's close the tab. Is that rebooting again? No, it's not because it wasn't talking to it. So new tab, client. No, that's wrong. What you do is you put in the IP address of the node which you just found out. So it's that 0.131, which is what I tried earlier. And hopefully that will connect. There it is. <clears throat> so it has, and then it's gone away again. Interesting, let's try that again. This worked when I tried it earlier, of course. Let's try another new tab. 192.0. Is it rebooting or something? No, it's not. It was there a second ago. Come back. Okay, so it's connected. And somehow <clears throat> that IP address is redirected to this app that runs in the browser for controlling the node. So that surprised me for a bit anyway. Now the IP address has automatically been entered in here because that's when we put in the uh, URL field in the browser. <clears throat> so it's HTTP, that's the IP. TLS has switched off for some reason. Never mind, let's do it off. Of course, you could always switch it on if you have it. And press connect. And ta-da, this time it works. <clears throat> As you can see, whoops, I was going to point my finger here. The um, It's not loading anymore, it's connected. And if we go in and look at the config, we can go through settings and so on, and it tells me the node name. Previously, when I had it almost working, this was set to unknown and UNK, which is not my node, because this is the name that's been put in it. So it looks like it's working now. Um, there's a list of peers that seems to work. So as you can see, it appears to be communicating with the node. So the answer is, for me anyway, to put the IP address of, of the node after it's connected to Wi-Fi, to put that in the browser and then use the app that starts in the browser to connect to it, as you'd expect, and it has the IP address automatically entered. If you put this in manually, for me it didn't work, but now it does work. So hopefully that's helped you out if you were having trouble connecting via Wi-Fi. And of course the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can uh, <clears throat> control this device and, also device and send and receive messages this is the um, what's called the long fast channel at the moment, the primary channel. So it's like an open public chat. So it's handy to be able to type messages on the computer keyboard. It's, I find it easier than on the phone screen. And the next stage, of course, is to um, route internet traffic from outside through my VPN server to this device so that I can control the MeshTastic node when I'm out on the road or wherever via VPN to my home internet connection. So that's, that's the next thing that I'll try and maybe I'll make a video about it. Thank you for watching and please remember to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.